up, guys? Welcome to the Comedy Pop-Up Podcast. It's your boy, Sean Grant. I'm here with Alex, of course, on the ones and twos. And as usual, you guys know we bring in some of the best comic talent from in and around Los Angeles. Well, they're usually in Los Angeles at the time, but they could be based somewhere else. But these guys are amazing. They're based Woo! here. Uh, originally from Detroit, we got Chris Marie Dennis in the house. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. It's just me wow. clapping because we don't have any sound it bites. It sounded like multiple claps. <laughs> <laughs> and then also with her, man, this guy's dope. He's the host of the Dirty Sports Podcast. And he's got his own comedy special out right now called Joe Prano Takes the Stand. Ooh, very good special. So, yeah. yeah. One of Thank my you. favorites. Clap it up for Joe Prano, y'all. Yeah. yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for joining the podcast today, man. Thanks for having us. Of course, of course. And you guys have known each other for a little while, is that right? Yeah, like, I, I knew Joe before I started comedy. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. But I really got to know him once I got became a stand-up. But I knew uh. him because he does sports, and then I did. Uh, I was a sports reporter. So On I, ESPN, right? You did ESPN? No, I did a show oh. called The Fumble, and I did HBO Boxing. Top-ranked boxing, right? Uh -huh, oh, uh -huh. yeah. Dope, yeah. man. So you guys... So, Met through that. So I did his podcast once and I was like, I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> was I mean to you the first you time? You were not mean, but I was like, he does, he, I, I don't know what it was about him, but I was like, I think this guy hates women. And then I got to know him better and I was like, oh no, he's such a good guy. But like, I he love has women, this, in fact. he loves women. He's like such a good dude. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great. I, I feel lucky to have him as a friend in stand up. Yeah, so. absolutely. I it, like to say that I'm a true feminist because I treat yeah. women just like I treat men, which is right. like not great. You know, <laughs> I treat everybody with the same amount of distaste. He does. He absolutely. Does. I felt bad because uh, we both did a show together, Chris and Marie, on uh, Saturday at the Ha Ha. Uh -huh. And uh, I went before you, a friend of mine. She was very drunk and very energetic. Uh -huh. And you came up to What's her. What's her number? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's the, we actually do a podcast together. We do the Cuckoo Time podcast. It's an improv podcast. Oh, cuckoo Time for her. Yeah, that sounds super... very fitting. Oh, yeah. Cuckoo. But she asked you, um, or you told her, hey, stay for my set just because she was so energetic. Energetic and give, giving out. Well, she was giving you a standing ovation. Right. I was like, what? Wait till she hears my then, my uh, exactly. take on things. And then she asked you, "Are you a comic?" But I think she was just drunk and couldn't see yeah, well. She couldn't believe but I think with he, these right. beautiful tits that I also have. Jokes. I think yeah, that's what you said. You're like, I know. Most I'm gonna go can't strip. believe it. They're like, "What kind of beautiful titties are these that go with these punchlines?" Right. Uh, and I feel uh -huh. that they get pleasantly surprised. Joe was absolutely. Pleasantly. Joe thought I was gonna be the dumbest bitch in comedy when I started. Yeah, and you, you're killing it, man. Like what's yeah, I you know I didn't I didn't know what to expect. But yeah. The, yeah. the first time I got to say the first time I saw you do stand up you weren't that long into it and I was I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Everybody yeah. sucks when they start stand up. Yeah, I didn't. Right. You didn't suck because you had you had experience being on camera on mic yeah. and all that stuff. And you just, had you had a personality. Yeah, right? just being booked at hot because they don't really book a lot of women. Like well, because yeah. Terry, you know, she's very hard on women. Oh, is and, she? Oh, she's hard on. Yeah, it's got to be funny. Everybody's got to be funny, and you're great. Yeah, so it's, uh, thank you. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, funny women in comedy that people just kind of forget or something because I'm mm -hmm. like, people will always say, oh, they're trying to find funny females. Like someone told me that about the Laugh Factory recently, that they're, they, they're on mm -hmm. the hunt for funny females. I was like, do you know how many funny women there are? Because when I started stand up, I only went, I only seeked out the females in comedy because right, right, I wanted right. to see, you know, like what their voice was, um, yeah. you know, what their takes on life was mm -hmm. and all that jazz. And right. uh I was like, God, how, have they not heard of like Zainab Johnson and yeah. Nicole Amy Schreiber and Jessica Michelle course, Singleton? And yeah. I just, there's so many women in comedy. Sydney Washington, I had lunch with her yesterday and I was like, yeah. God, I'm so obsessed with this woman. Absolutely. Um, I feel like in a, in New York, they show the women in comedy a lot more respect mm. than in Los Angeles. And I feel like it's because it's the women running the comedy scene. A lot of the bookers are female, but in they're- In New York, you yeah, mean? Yeah. Oh. But, uh, but they're females who are not in standup. So right, it's not right, like a right. competitive- thing they're yeah. all they do is uh, book, book women yeah. like there's Adele at the stand she's amazing I met right. another girl that does kombucha I think it's called mm -hmm. comedy which was like an amazing it was just such a great show and there's yeah. always like three to four women on a lineup it's beautifully done right uh, it's always like an ethnically diverse lineup as well uh -huh. um I like a variety absolutely you know because yeah. I feel like when you put too many people who are similar you kind of hear the same shit it's all the yeah. same premises 
Oh, it sucks being a straight white man right now. Right, 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 right. right. It does suck. Is that? I mean, I don't talk about it, but it does suck. It does suck. Oh. But Joe, you, you're an ex-athlete. Is that? Are you an ex-athlete? I saw on I your like Instagram. I like to think I'm still an athlete. Oh, but my bad. I'm just not quite as good at it as I used to be. No, yeah. I played. Uh, Was yeah, it baseball. I, I played baseball, basketball, and football. I nice. Mean, uh, you know, and I swam for a long time. But yeah, I mean, I. I it's hard saying I'm the athlete, like on what level, you know, we all played something at some point, but right. like, yeah, I, I care. I cared a lot about sports growing up and yeah. I thought that's how I got into comedy. I was for, right. I, I was for sure like, Oh, I'm going to be the closer for the New York Mets and that's going to happen. <laughs> and then I hit a wall and was like, no, I'm not, I guess right. I should have another plan. <laughs> right. And then I was like, who else gets, who else pulls chicks besides athletes? <laughs> and then I saw David Letterman kiss Julia Roberts on his show, and I was like, that seems like a pretty good That's gig. It. Oh, my God. Gonna, what a beautiful uh, – do you talk about this on stage? <laughs> no, but I should, right? You should. It was, it was like – I was like, if he – if him and his fucking, you know, wig and his, like, gap teeth <laughs> – he's my hero, by the way. I'm not dissing Letterman. Like, right. I truly am only in comedy because of Letterman. I was like, yeah. if he can kiss Julia Roberts on the mouth, mm-hmm. I'm getting into comedy. Hell yeah, dude. And look yeah. at me. Here I am sitting next to Crystal Marie. Yeah, you know, in, in, a, in a dungeon in yeah. Koreatown. I, I like specially requested him, too. They're like, is there anyone you want to do the podcast with? I was yeah. Like, if you guys could get Joe Prano, but I know his schedule's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hard, hard to get me at noon on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Never know where I'm going to be headlining. And then within 30 seconds, he's like, done. Joe is booked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. So it, do you know, you know, a bunch, there's a bunch of like ex athlete. Uh, are you an ex athlete, Crystal no, Marie? No. No? Do you, no high school my sports? lower body looks like I'm built like a goddamn <laughs> stallion, but no. Uh, no high school. Oh, no. Yeah. no, I played soccer growing up because my dad played soccer professionally in Iraq. Yeah. Um. So he made all That's of us dope. play for some reason. Yeah. Um. I hated it. Every second of it, I hated it. Yeah. Especially because I was advanced when I was younger. So they made me play with girls who were older than me. And they just, I was like the little shit of the team. <laughs> uh, so no one was nice to me. So I think it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Right. Was this in, wait, no, in Detroit though. But not, yeah, not, this was oh. in Detroit. Like when I was a kid growing up. Uh, they should have let me. Well, actually, I guess it's good that they did because I was like, they should have just let me be the best, what the best player, right? The advanced player with the kids my age. But then I was like, God, my ego's already so big. Could you imagine <laughs> how much more confident I would be if that were the case? So Man. I guess it's good. I needed to humble them. God was like, humble her. So <laughs> I'm trying to think who are the top ex athlete comedians? Brendan Schaub, Brendan does Schaub, it. Joe uh, Rogan used to be. A- was Joe Rogan an athlete or he just was, he was a like correspondent? A, or a, a black belt, right? Oh, wow. World no. Champ. World champion. But he's been doing that throughout his career, though, right? That wasn't. Before. Oh, before. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. That's Alex Khan, by the way, my Alex son, Khan. my yeah. comedy son. And I, was, I mean, we obviously lost a, a great one recently. Oh, that's Bro- right. Brody, Brody was, was uh, a, played at ASU. He played at uh, ASU. Wow. wow. He's, you know. Baseball. He played baseball. 88 with movement, as wow. we like to tell everybody. Wow. Jeez, so, yeah. man. And, wow. uh Joey Medina, I think, he used to box. And oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of former uh, martial arts, like MMA, at one point, I remember like seeing a lot of lineups where there was like a lot of former MMA, mm-hmm. um, not stars, but athletes yeah. um, doing stand-up, but they just kind of dabbled. It's kind of like porn stars. They just dabble right. a little bit. Um, porn stars and MMA stars, they like to dabble in stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like definitely with the... I can see the connection with boxing or, or any kind of martial thing because it's, it's a little one-on-one and a lot of the jabs, punchline, like you know, it's, right. it's similar in, in Something very comparison. current in the news, Stormy Daniels. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. getting into comedy for real. Yeah, I'm interested to hear what like how you feel about that, Joe. Good for her. I know. I, I, I mean, the, the, so I, I understand people being upset with like, she kind of gets to skip the line mm. and she's headlining immediately, but <laughs> she, first of all, she's headlining a Wednesday, yeah. right? And well, even if she's headlining a weekend, how right. is she skipping the lines? Right. Uh, Stand up is what your life is. So what has prepared you to like get in front of the mic and speak about yourself. She has all the, she has this journey that she's been on. Yeah. I mean, prepared her look the, Mm. at this point, uh, crying foul on somebody getting to work because they have a following is, uh, you're, you've already missed the boat on that. Like Mm. we just talked about, you know, um, Brendan Chobb, like, you know, he gets to skip the line because he was a UFC fighter. Right. And mm-hmm. Theo Vaughn is one of the funniest dudes 
alive, but like when he first started, it was like, oh, you know him from Road Rules. Like, right. uh, there's a right. million different people who they said it about me too because yeah. I had my background in news reporting, and they were like, why is you know they can't understand I mean, why Vine, Vine stars right. and fucking YouTubers and but whatever. I'll tell you this, they're all like Brendan Schaub, Theo. They all put the fucking work and, in, and that's they what they work their asses off. Actually, Jessica Michelle said a really good quote. I mean, a really good tweet. I want to read it. To and you I think that's Stormy. the thing with Stormy is like, mm-hmm. if she sucks and she, you know, the crowd hates it, then she won't keep going. But I think she will. Yeah. You think she'll suck? I know. I think she'll keep going if she sucks oh. or doesn't suck. I don't know. I feel like she's going to, I think she's going to prepare. Right. Properly. It'll have to be like what Mike Tyson did, like a one person show, less of a comedy, like less of stand up, more of like a. Like a John Leguizamo, like a performance type piece. Yeah, so. that's what I think it's going to be. Like yeah. one of those. But Jessica Michelle said, imagine being so insecure about your ability to do an art that you get mad at someone else for trying to do it. <laughs> and that hit me so deep. I was like, God, that's so. Well, I mean, again, I don't think anybody's upset that she's trying to do it. Like if she showed up at yeah. the improv open mic this week, I don't think anybody would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, they're just mad. <laughs> and, and Jessica Michelle is a great example because I love Jessica and I think she's fucking hilarious. Yeah. And you know, look at how hard she had to work to headline. Right. And, yeah. you know, in comedy, if you don't have a credit, then they're not going to book you. Or if your podcast isn't huge, they're not going to book you. If your Instagram's not huge. Stormy Daniels has all those things from fucking Donald Trump. From fucking. And yeah. <laughs> and, and, and good for her. And, and good for her. Well, let's see how it goes. Like, I don't, absolutely. She, look, I'm not, I'm not fighting with Stormy Daniels for spots. Right. So yeah. I, I got I to worry about, I got to worry are. about the white dudes. I can't. I can't. <laughs> big titty, I guess she's big my girls. I was going to say, no. you're the ones. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm happy for her. I, I love stand up. It's brought a lot of joy to my life. It's helped me work out like a lot of issues that I've had. So yeah. uh, I'm very grateful to the, to stand up and grateful to the people who were kind to me when I started. Everyone's cool right. with me now, but I'm saying from the jump, like Joe Prano. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> yeah. But I think stand up is a beautiful thing and people are catching on to that. Uh, and yeah. so they want to give it a go. And of course, like like you said, if she goes to the improv open mic, no matter where she goes, it's going to be a huge thing. Yeah. Um, so she might as well make money off of it. You know, Absolutely. so she's like, I'm going to go and I'm going to. And I'm sure she's not, porn's not paying her like it used to. I mean, porn's not paying anyone like it used to because oh, yeah, now there's so all that saturated. the free. Yeah. So you just go on red tube. Everything is free. Yeah. Um, and so I think, yeah, I'm happy for her. But Absolutely. I agree with Joe. Like, I think people are upset she's not putting in the work. Um, but a lot of times maybe she's going to, but that's what I mean. Maybe she is. Maybe she's going to private mics. We don't know about, I don't know. I was putting in a lot of work and no one knew that I was putting in work. They're like, they did actually, they did know because there's not that many women at open mics. So they're like, who's this big titty hoe doing these? See, that's the thing. Like, I feel like you, I feel like you're out every night doing it. You know what I mean? You're doing Monday, the ha ha and you're doing whatever. And it's like, I get that Stormy Daniels has the ability to fill a room immediately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think if you're that big, like I don't want to do the ha ha hut in Houston if I don't have to. If I could go to Houston and sell a theater and never step foot in a Houston comedy club, I would do it. Absolutely. So why not do that, I guess? But it's... Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, it's her life. Let her do it. I mean, she fucked Donald yeah. Trump. I mean, she's you not, both. She's not, she's, she's not the greatest yeah. decision maker that they've ever been. Like, <laughs> you both know. I mean, like, uh, and my buddy who I who I tour with, uh, King Batch, he's like got 17 million. Oh, I love, yeah. I love Batch. Yeah. So it's, there's, we, and I started with him back at Florida State. So he was doing comedy before, but not as much. But the thing is, like, you both know there's nothing more lonely than bombing on stage. You know, when you're on stage, that, You'll find out if you like doing it. And so you have to make sure nobody can skip the work. You know, you yeah. might get the people in. I think that's what, what Joe said in. was yeah. true. Like you, you, you can tell if this is really for you, if you bomb yeah, and still want to do it the next day. Right. So I think with her, you're right. If she eats a dick at this. Yeah. You remember when debut. Charlie was starting? When Charlie Murphy? Back in, like, yeah. I remember when he came to uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, Because I was in that scene. I was uh, like a local comic. They had to give money back. Like the club. I remember him leaving. Yeah. Like having his boy bring a check back out on stage. Oh, yeah. Just like putting it down and be like, fuck you then. Yeah. They were booing him. Wow. And he stopped the boo. It was at a college. It was like Morehouse College or something in Atlanta. And uh, they were offended. And Colleges are hard. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Especially when you're like, especially if you're like a Charlie Murphy or those guys who are kind of like they teeter that line. These newly, especially black colleges, newly woke kids. So they're like, oh, you can't talk about that or you have to think this certain way. I think the thing, too, with people who, you know, take fame and then jump into comedy. For comedy audiences that go see him, 
don't expect to see a polished stand-up comic. Oh, good, and if yeah. you're somebody who's not a comedy fan and yeah. you go and it's not good, don't fucking write off comedy. Because mm. I was at uh, House of Comedy in Arizona a couple months ago, and this couple came. I won't say who they went and saw, but they went and saw somebody who sort of skipped the line for being famous right. at, at another club in Arizona. And they said, we just had the worst time. It was <laughs> awful. Okay. He bombed. Yeah. We didn't even know who he was. And they're like, well, he's not really a stand-up. He's kind of an actor and whatever. And then, and then oh, they were okay. like, we wanted to give it another <laughs> shot. And so they came to Jeremy the, Piven. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and then they were like, and you guys really – you know, you turned it around for us because we were like not we were like we should give comedy another shot. And I was like, thank you guys for coming. That's real. I'm glad like that people, you did. People like not wanting if you've gone to like a mic or a bar show and you had a horrible experience, you think that's what comedy is. Right. Unless you know the person, unless you've seen Kevin Hart or whoever, you're going to assume every non famous comedian is just going to talk about how ugly you are or whatever they did to you. Yeah. And I've seen people traumatized like, oh, I don't do that. I don't go to stand yeah. up. I mean, look at every comedy club. You guys are, you know, you work at the improv. It's like oh, yeah. the, the people who come in and they're like, I don't want to sit in the front. And it's like, it, it ain't like that. This right, isn't right. It is if I'm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, people come they're used to saying like, oh, if I'm going to sit in the front, this, I'm just going to get destroyed the whole time. Right. And you're oh, like, not if it's a good, that. not if it's a good lineup. Yeah. Oh, so I'm a hack for no, no, no. No, no, because you, you know, the, I think when you do crowd work to talk to people and then use what they say is the art of doing crowd work to attack people uh -huh. is the hack. All right. Oh, no, yeah. I agree. I've never. Look mean. at this fat guy. What do yeah, you have yeah, for yeah. breakfast? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, can you Alpo, look like you like, ate this yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> you look like yeah, you exactly. Ate this guy. I would find that very funny. I like that. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't want to get. To, feel free to not answer. It's, sure, go ahead. If uh, you 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 worked on Fo as an affiliate on Fox News, I saw. It. No. Oh, okay. Then I, never mind. I worked locally <laughs> in Detroit. Oh, if I like oh, local okay. news, news stations as like the rookie. Because I was because I honestly, went to Specs Howard School of Broadcast Arts, and then oh, dope. you get offered like I got a clear. Ch I got to work with Clear Channel. Right, right, um, right. Because there's not a lot of people that really go into broadcasting. Gotcha. Uh, in Detroit, as much as well, there actually is now, but back then, yeah, mostly war zone reporters, yeah. mostly people who want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was, I was just curious to, because I wasn't sure if you were conservative. Even if you did work at Fox News, there's yeah. plenty of people who are conservative working at yeah, NBC. Yeah, I'm not conservative. Or, I'm an, my parents yeah. are Iraqi immigrants. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, you know, so, oh man, I wanted to get the conservative. I've never had, we've never had a conservative comedian on this. Are there any? I think there's yeah, still there are. Jay. Yeah. Who What's is, his name? Is Jay Moore? No. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Yeah, I mean, I've heard. Uh, why? Why are you sure he is? Does he have a reputation for that? No, there's. Uh, no, I don't have a I don't, microphone. I'm sorry. I don't think he's like. Super, I thought that, that the mic was picking this up. I don't think he's super conservative, but I know he's pretty religious. Who Jay pretty, Moore? Yeah. Oh, okay. Which I think you know. I don't want to say. Well, it goes hand in hand. You know. It, yeah. I, I don't think all religious people are necessarily conservative, but most conservative people are pretty religious. Well, yeah. I guess while we're there, is there a place for that? And kind of like, do I mean, should do they deserve a voice? And comedy i know dennis miller I think dennis every, miller everyone everybody deserves, deserves a voice, voice. Yeah. i always say like whatever your career if you could fill a room go talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about right it's right, your right. it's your audience they're your fans mm -hmm. um there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to just yeah. like with the stormy thing who else is no one else is filling a room on a wednesday right, like people right, right. got mad i did a, a laugh factory show once uh, where it was like social media stars mm -hmm. uh, on the lineup it was just like a social monday yeah but they were having trouble filling the room and they were like, can you put together, because a company I was working with uh, repped all of these social stars. Right. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll put together a lineup of social stars that want to do comedy. But I mixed in real, co like, not that they're not real comics, but real comics too. <laughs> uh, so that if if they bombed, there was That's still a good show. Still yeah. a good show and people were getting their money's worth. And we packed it out. It was amazing. And mind you, this is a slot that usually has like 15 people in the audience. Right. Um, and so I was just like, you know, I get it why people were upset, but you have to understand these clubs are still a business. Yeah. Um, and they want to sell tickets and make money so that they can stay in business and we can go and headline other nights. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. So, because if no one's going and they're only filling on the weekends, I don't think that these places stay in business. You I know? see you guys get bumped and they get so upset and they're like, well, he didn't, uh, I saw, who was it? Somebody got upset because it's not like, oh, Fluffy dropped in and he did like maybe like 30 minutes or something in the middle of a pretty long show at Haha. -ha. But it's like, 
Yeah, he didn't. He was like he. Didn't, nobody came to see him tonight. Blah, blah. Well, no, but when they post that he was here, right? Then tomorrow yeah. night, and I for mean, the I'm, next few I'm always weeks, respectful of the people who were here before me. Of course, yeah, dude. Like, Especially women who like paved the way. I don't give a fuck. You want to when he comes, you want to come bump me for an hour? Go ahead, girl. I, I also think <laughs> I'm just I'll, happy to be in your presence. I also think that there's you know the the way comics get treated by other comics like. Uh-huh. You know, if you if somebody bumps you, but they do it, they just drop in and then suddenly they're fucking next. That's right. one thing. Hey, if they come up to me, if I'm supposed to be next and they come, David Tell came up to me, he was like, hey, man, did you get bumped twice already? Tonight? I was like, yeah, he's like, well, then you're going to go next and I'll close the show. I was like, fuck, I'm a Dave a tell fan for life oh, now he's right. because he's like a he's respectful he's so, I bombed so hard once and he witnessed it and still came up to me and complimented the structuring of my jokes. Oh, and nice. I was like, he was desperate to give me some. He knew I was gasping for air <laughs> he's like let me just give throw this poor girl some sort of bone so she doesn't yeah. you know go home and you know was that your worst bomb ever or no my worst bomb was in the belly room, the belly room um, the because the the guy who booked me for the show then sent me some like super misogynistic messages oh before you perform? After. Oh, after. Oh, my God. Uh, in response to why he thought I bombed. Mind you, I had done The guy his, who booked the show? Yeah. Oh mind you, God. I had done his show two weeks prior and had a great set, a killer set, and I was only six months in. Uh, but he does, like, bringer shows, so he was, like, booking me as essentially a bringer because I, at that time I was new, so I could bring yeah. a lot of people out. Um, but he mixed real comics, like, famous comics in the sets, too. Yeah. Um, but it was just, it was my, my first bomb. So my first time bombing was my hardest time bombing because right. it was six months in. So I thought I was untouchable. I was like, oh, I'm six months into comedy and I haven't <laughs> bombed yet. I'm never going to bomb. <laughs> and that week I had not only my best set, but my worst set. So I had the yeah. best set of my life at the improv prior to that. Yeah. And then, uh, I bombed so bad. Um, we don't that, avoid comedy beef on comedy pop, but who was it? Oh no, I don't have I, beef I, with anyone. I, I would beef? never give him it. any sort of like. Why would I name someone and you don't know him? Now you're going to know him. Fuck that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck that guy. All right, good. If it was someone you knew, I would shit all over him. Oh, wonderful. I'm not going to give someone recognition. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to give someone recognition that doesn't have it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You haven't done anything to earn that. What was your worst bomb, Joe? Uh, my worst bomb, I, I started when I was in college and uh, uh-huh. I would drive in. I went to Lehigh University, which is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It's yeah. like equidistant from New York and Philly. So it was about an hour and a half without traffic to New York. Yeah. And I started one summer when I was home in New York. And then when I was in school, uh, I would go in and do an amateur night at like the comic strip every couple Wednesdays. Right. So I'd get in my car and I would drive. And uh, a couple of my friends found out that I did comedy and they, uh, they were like, hey, can we, can we ride with you and check out the show? And I was like, sure. So I bring them, do great. It's awesome. On the way back, one of the guys is like, hey, I'm the head of the Greek society here at school will you will you perform at this big greek event we have yeah, next yeah. week i go sure what do you want me to do he's like just do exactly what you just did yikes uh at the comic strip so i'm in i'm on stage outside which we all now once you do comedy for a while you know outside is the worst fucking place to do comedy mm-hmm. uh outside mm-hmm. on a st- you booked me for an outdoor show <laughs> yeah, yeah a backyard that's that's a little bit better but like outside on just like a on the on the Field. quad with like 400 you know greek people <laughs> right. and um I do the whole thing, and I actually had like a Daryl, you know, going back to the sports, I had a Daryl Strawberry cancer joke like in my <laughs> thing, and then found out that like after the fact that the whole thing was like a cancer benefit. Oh, oh. no. But, I'm, but not only am I bombing, I'm bombing as a junior in college in front of every sorority girl in school. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm never getting laid again. I was like, this is a double bomb. I'm not just fucking not getting laughs. I'm not getting laid. Like, that's I'm only doing comedy to get laid, and now I'm not ever getting laid. It's, I'm like, I'm going to have to transfer. Have you been getting laid a lot since starting comedy? Like, do you feel like you get laid more now than ever yeah. in life? Mm. Yeah. What mm. did you, what profession did you, you said you were like minor league baseball prior? No, 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 no. I was just an athlete, like oh. in high school and, okay. and stuff like that. What but, other like, jobs have you held? I, when I got out of school, I was in TV. I, I worked at the, I worked at CBS as a okay. page, and then I worked at the Evening News, and then I did. I left that to do comedy, and then I went back and did production, like mm. you know, uh, freelance shit. And then I've yeah. had a million, you know, shit jobs along the way, right? To, right. To, yeah. While still, you know, basically doing comedy, but I think at some point, you know, when you get Good, like I don't, I'm not gonna. I don't bomb anymore because it's like I know 
that no matter what, I'm not going to, it's not going to flatline. Right. So right, when right. you go up, when you go up there with like a certain level of confidence and you talk about yourself and like, then it's just a matter of like, if a girl thinks you're attractive just in life and then they see you do well at comedy, you've already won. You yeah. Know, like, well, also, like, I feel like it's not even just you being a stand up. It's also you're around way more women. Because mm. when you hold a regular job, there's not an audience. So there's not mm-hmm. like you go, you do, let's say you do the improv, right? And mm-hmm. it's a sold out night. What is there? 200 people, 250 people. Yeah. Mm. Um, how many women? Half of that is women. Right. Um, maybe 25% of that is women that you'd be attracted to. Right. Um, and so that like gives you your odds of getting laid. And, all, and then also just higher. talking to mm-hmm. one person after you talk to. 200 people is so much less pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Especially true. when they saw you do You know what, what I mean? Like once once you've spent years, I've been doing comedy almost 20 years now. I right. bombed I bombed in front of 400 sorority girls. Right, it'll right, never right. be that bad. If one girl turns <laughs> me down, it'll never be as bad as 400 turning me down simultaneously. Right. <laughs> so I walk into every conversation with a woman like, I don't really care how this goes. And I think that right. goes a long way, you know? could Can you talk to a woman that didn't see you do comedy? Sure. That's yeah. hard for me. Yeah. I could, that's like, hard for you? That's, that's hard for me. Teach you. Let's teach you. Yeah. Oh no, well, I got a girl now. In fact, oh, okay. she didn't see me do comedy first. Well, you weren't then I had scared to then, invite, were you? No, I hit her up online, and I was oh. like on a gram, and I got a DM. But then I immediately invited her to a show because I was like, "This is the only way I have power. This is the only way." Oh, you see that I'm good at this. That's then, so weird because weird? you are so confident on stage. I just saw you destroy it the haha the oh, other day. Thank you you had probably the best set of the night. Now thank that you. I think about it, um, I didn't see who went on before you, but I saw ten comics go on after you, and everyone did well. But um, you did very well. I was like, oh, I was very impressed because I didn't know you prior. (laughs) And um, watching you, I'd be like, oh, he pulls so many women. That's what I would have thought. But How old are you? I'm 32. Okay. Oh, you're older than I am. I was going to say, you're still, but you're still young enough, like, yeah. out of my like i do not meet pim- people online like i've mm-hmm. never been able to do that like what the 10 minutes i was on tinder i was like no this is not it like right, right, right. because that takes away all of my powers like all oh. of my all of my powers come in being confident enough to talk to somebody in person being tall like having a oh. fucking mustache you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah 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 uh, online they're like who's this creep i'm like See? i have no confidence sliding into somebody's <laughs> dms i'll slide into the bathroom with you oh, but like, oh, oh my shit. goodness not, no. any, not, not anymore because yeah. I've never, done, I've never done online dating either. Ever. No? Uh-uh. And I've never met anyone, I don't think, off of social media. Yeah. No, I have. I've had like, because I used to do sports news, so many athletes sl- slide in my DMs because yeah. they'd see me on the shows. But uh, I always was like, I'm never dating an athlete because right. I... Just like now, I'm never dating a comic. <laughs> I just don't like to date within, you know, like where I'm, you know, what's the saying? You know, it's gross. I don't want to, yeah, I don't something. like saying that, but yeah. um, what, they need to come up with a better saying than that. <laughs> um, I've never understood it. I mean, I know what it means, but I never, shit where you eat. I guess. I, don't, yeah. so I having guess I would sex never is like say never. Shit. I would understand why I would never date an athlete, but right. comics is a little different because there are like, the more I'm getting to know, uh-huh. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of good dudes in this yeah. uh, scene but still I think know. the best people are also the ones that are going to share that I've never dated a comic I don't think I would ever date a comic it's just too much it's not even a shit where you eat thing it's like I don't need to be that, like my personal life I want to be able to step away All right. you know what All I mean right. yeah. I don't want to go home and like work on tags together like right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good man I That's feel like so that funny. I've seen couples who work and like a uh, couple friends of mine actually they got married last year Adrian and um, Aristotle. I knew them from oh Florida. Oh my god, I know Adrian and Aristotle. I love yeah. them. Yeah, and they, you know, I was always like, wow, they they work, they make it work great. There doesn't seem to be any like jealousy no. or you know what I mean. Like no, that's what beautiful. I'm always worried about. Like, oh no, would I get jealous if she starts getting stuff or would she yeah. get you know that type of thing? I can see that. Yeah, that's why it's got to be like maybe someone like if I were to date someone, he'd have to be like already established and into it. It couldn't be someone right. who's at the same phase as I am because. Yeah. It would be exhausting. Right. I think when Voss met, didn't Voss and McFarlane, they're still together, right? Bonnie. Yeah. McFarlane. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they were already established or, or like they already no were I don't know well on their, yeah, I think they were well on their paths. And I think yeah. that I don't, I don't know when they met and everything like that, but they're both, I think they both were succeeding. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometime. And both still are. Yeah. yeah. What, I know you talked about, you put a lineup together. What would be your guys's, and when I say, Top comedy lineup. I don't mean best comedians, not your favorite comedian, but 90 minute show. Mm-hmm. Who hosts it? Who are the middles and who closes it? 
Like, and, and maybe how long? Like, what do you... Uh, this, this question's just been on my mind. I don't think I've ever asked that on this show, right? I feel like it's a bad question. Is it a bad question? I don't know. A just good... Like, your, your, you your favorite you, show. We, we should have prepped this question in advance. Oh, yeah? Because I my feel like I'm gonna, every time people are like, who are you, your favorite, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and I want to do I, a top five. And then I leave and I'm like, damn it. Right. I would have said... <laughs> I should have said So that. I'm going to not say anything, but you go ahead, Jeff. I don't even know mine yet. Yeah, no. I don't know. I feel like this shit comes back to haunt us. No. Really? I, she didn't say enough women. Oh, she didn't da, yeah. da, 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 whatever the fuck. Uh, somebody get asked so, me at this store. And my then top ten. five years from now, someone one of them's gonna end up fucking children, and we're gonna right. be like, "What did I? I put him on my lineup." <laughs> I put I made a top ten at comedy store for the guys, and then I made my top ten. I have moms, Mabel, and I have Ellen in the top ten somewhere, right? Yeah. And somebody, somebody was like, "No, you're real top ten." <laughs> and I was like, what? Come on, dude. The women, yeah, they get, like get out of here with the moms, maybe, and the Ellen. Like, go ahead, Joe. You're, no one judges Joe. No one fucks with Joe. So you go, Joe. All right, go I wish that were true. But I don't know. For for like a 90-minute – like to me, I think that there is still something really great about uh, the – you know the MC feature headliner yeah, lineup. Yeah, it's a different I think, skill set. I, I, think like- that's, uh, I think that is – you know, when you go on the road, I think that yeah. there's something really fucking awesome about that still that's better than – and I obviously I'm from New York and I live in L.A. And there's there's certainly something great about going to a club and seeing 20 killer comics in a night do 10 yeah. minutes and like – you know, uh, frantic in New York where it's just, oh, they're, they're just going to keep That's going. Like yeah. Just keep going no matter, you know, if people are there, we're going to keep going with fire comics. But I still think that there's something fantastic about uh, host feature headliner. And I think on my perfect lineup, yeah, I'm hosting it. Nice. Like I'm not Ooh. fucking headlining or featuring it because like, I think that there's some, there's a skill to being a great host. I, I love hosting. Um, so I'm hosting it and then, and then I don't know. I mean, I guess you could say like, uh, uh, a great lineup for me would be taking somebody that I know is an incredible headliner and letting them only have to do 25 minutes, you know, like Lachlan, who I think is so fucking funny. And I, you know, used to host a podcast with like Lachlan as a 25 minute feature act. Like I could watch that all day. And then I don't know, headliners, like, I don't know, fucking Bill Burr. Like, you know, I'd be sick. You know, I I gotta go. My favorite host is Martin, man. Like if you've watched those old prime Martin, not now Martin, but like early Martin, Martin Lawrence, Martin Lawrence is like the greatest host. If you watch yeah. Def Jam, like the he made stars the way he would bring you out, and then how he would comment on your set afterward. Like he'd be like, yeah. "Oh, that boy crazy!" Like, yeah. like yeah. Chris, when Chris Tucker got off, you that made him a star. It was Martin's like, like just man, like these guys are amazing. Like I, you really felt like you were I th- watching. Something. I think the I think the best in the world like is constantly changing. You know, yeah, like yeah, who, yeah. who I want to see at any given moment. I didn't. I've, I've been a fan of his since he was super nice to me at the comic strip like 20 years ago. Oh. And I'll ride for Adam Sandler forever no matter oh, how many shitty yeah. fucking Netflix movies he does. <laughs> but like his special, I love him. His he special was fucking awesome. Yeah. Like I, when I saw his special, I was like, dude, that would be so fun to be on the road and like oh, do 10 minutes before that. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, warm yeah. up the crowd for, for that, for the guitars and the Absolutely. fucking Chris Farley song. And like, man, that, that, you know. If I could go out with somebody right now, I'd love to go out with Adam Sandler. Like, oh, yeah. Me too. And by yeah. go out, I mean date. I'd, <laughs> I'd love to date him. <laughs> she said me too. Do a threesome with him. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, I love – Adam Sandler has the best reputation because when I – I used to do extra work when I first moved here to get my SAG vouchers. Right. And any movie I did that was his movie mm-hmm. – um, the extras were treated exceptionally well because he made sure every single person on that set from the people who were cleaning up to the stars were mm-hmm. all treated like, you know, human like beings. Star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Human beings, because a lot of times when we would do extra work, we weren't treated like human beings. So right. um, it was nice. Any, any, All the extras knew if you got an Adam Sandler movie, it was going to be great. And he always <laughs> nice. made sure he upgraded a bunch of uh, extras to like make their whole life. So yeah. they would like set aside a budget for each movie from what I had heard a feature um, extra type to stuff. just, yeah, yeah, to upgrade an extra, give them a line, which if you've ever done extra work and you get upgraded to principal, it's the greatest moment of oh, your geez. life. Yeah. Um, you go from making 80 bucks to almost a thousand dollars and that's without residuals. So, right. um, it's amazing. Yeah. So he has a great reputation. Even like, if you notice the actresses he puts in his film, yeah. mm-hmm. it's always like the sweethearts, like the ones that have a, 
yeah. who also have good reputations for treating people well. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's great. Like I, I'm always going to be an Adam Sandler fan for that. Yeah, man. And I know you guys, well, you know, this comes out next Tuesday. Do you guys have anything uh, coming up uh, in the following few weeks in Los Angeles? Uh, so like next Tuesday. So that means uh, the following weekend after this, uh, fr- right. uh, Friday, Saturday, I'll be at uh, Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio. Hey. At, the, at the improv there, I think Alan Havey is headlining. I'll, I'll be featuring for the weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday. And right. then in just in case there's somebody in the, you know, uh, Alaska realm that's what's saying <laughs> i'll be at the alaska before you die comedy festival the first week of april which i'm excited for it's my first trip to alaska wow, that's oh, checking, oh, that's checking one of my last five states off the list Dude, that's all sick. right that's sick. Yeah. cool i have nothing to promote just follow me on instagram i am crystal marie especially yeah that's if what you need female. more instagram followers if, especially if you're female i don't need any more men <laughs> <laughs> absolutely man. i'll what's take your... i'll take men and women yes, right. joe what's will take st- everyone yeah joe what's your instagram uh just joe prano at joe prano yep yeah, heck yeah. And we are at Comedy Pop-Up LA, or is it? Comedy at Comedy Pop-Up on Instagram. CPU and CPU Podcast. And uh, you can follow me at Mr. Sean Grant. Guys, we appreciate you listening. Tune in every thank week. Thank you, Sean. And uh, really thank you, guys. It. One more time for Joe and Crystal Marie. Alex, Clap we'll see you guys next like week. Beyonce. Everybody, bye-bye. <laughs>